Oscilloscope probes are used with virtually every scope. They enable the signals on the circuits being tested to be connected to the scope so that signals can be measured easily and accurately. In this video we're going to tell you more about scope probes so that you don't fall into some of the common pitfalls and so that you can make accurate measurements very easily. Scope probes are a great topic. In the industry there's more than a hundred different types of scope probes. Each scope probe allows a user to make a specific measurement better than other probes would make for that particular measurement. There's current probes, there's voltage probes, there's active probes and passive probes, high voltage probes, and probes that uniquely make DC measurements. You could use a length of coax instead of a probe and hold it on or solder it onto the circuit. But scope probes have been designed electrically and mechanically for probing a circuit and their performance is important. So the scope probes are very important to the whole system, mainly because the scopes are only as good as the probe itself. Scope probe performance is very important, but let's also understand why there are so many different types of scope probes. Oscilloscopes are primarily amplitude over time, however the amplitude can change depending on what type of probe. So for example, a voltage probe allows a user to measure voltage over time, a current probe allows a user to measure current over time. Math functions can be used to multiply those, so I could look at power over time, I could integrate current over time, and look charge over time. So there's a really wide variety of measurements that can be made across electronic signals. Let's just summarize some of the main types of probe. Voltage or current, passive or active, single-ended or differential, and high voltage probes. Within each category, there are many to choose from. There's a great choice. Let's start by looking at the most widely used probe, the passive voltage probe. This comes in two main varieties, what's called a times one, and there's also a times 10. The times one gives you better sensitivity, but a one megohm input impedance, or there's the times 10 that gives you a 10 megohm input impedance, but it reduces the signal by a factor of 10. And often a single probe may be switchable between times 1 and times 10. This lets you choose between sensitivity and loading the circuit. Also, there are some times 100 probes, but these are not nearly so common. Scopes normally have a 1 megohm impedance, and often there's a 50 ohm capability as well. Passive probes typically use a 1 megohm impedance, although a few are designed to work on 50 ohms. Probes present an impedance to the circuit under test. For passive times 1 probes, this is a megohm at DC, and for times 10 probes, it's normally 10 megs. But there is some capacitance as well. This has a major effect and causes discrepancies, even at quite low frequencies. To compensate for the scope capacitance, a capacitor is placed across the 9 megohm resistor in the probe. Adjustment is provided so that the correct capacitance potential divider ratio is obtained to give a flat response. The adjustment can be made either at the tip of the probe or at the point where the probe connects to the scope. A small adjuster will be seen on the probe and this is normally very obvious. On all scopes there will be an internal square wave generator. The probe should be connected to this and adjusted so that the waveform becomes square, not with rounded edges or with overshoot. The probe ground is also very important. This should be kept as short as possible to minimise the ground loop area. This removes signal ringing and unwanted noise. Ground springs are great for minimising the length of the probe ground, while the long length of the crocodile or alligator clips can produce unwanted ringing and noise. As we have heard, the performance of the scope probe is particularly important, but some areas are really key. So the bandwidth of the probe is essential to the whole system, so every manufacturer recommends that you at least use one and a half times the probe bandwidth to the, uh, to the maximum of the scope bandwidth. There are many other different forms of oscilloscope probe. One useful type that's been mentioned before is the current probe. This operates by clipping the probe around the wire carrying the current. It's not always possible to gain access to every conductor, 
but where it is possible, this probe can be very useful when current needs to be measured. Then there's the high voltage probe. When voltages get into the kilovolt region, special care needs to be taken and a voltage step down is required before the voltage enters the scope. Often high voltage probes have special insulated ends and they may be times 50 or, or times 100. Another form of probe commonly used is called an active probe. It can be either a voltage or a current type, although the voltage ones are more common. It gets its name because it has an active amplifier right in the tip of the probe. This can give it a very high resistance and low capacitance for low levels of circuit loading. Often active probes come into their own at frequencies above 500 megs or more, where passive probe performance becomes an issue. Active probes often operate well into the gigahertz region, dependent upon the particular probe, and they're often favoured for high frequencies because of their overall performance. These are some of the main types of probe that are used with oscilloscopes, the passive times 10 probe or the switch times 1 times 10 being the most common. When using scope probes, what do you need to think about? We've asked some industry experts to come up with a few of their top tips. Make sure that you're using a probe that has a high enough voltage rating. One key point is not to forget to compensate your probes to the actual scope uh, signal source. So to make sure that the system bandwidth is sufficient by using a probe that has a bandwidth of typically one and a half times your oscilloscope. So there we have it, a quick summary of scope probes.